This is Math 1201 video number 11. Inside this video, we're going to take a look at how to use elementary row operations to evaluate determinants. You've already seen that using the cofactor expansion method to calculate your determinant can get really, really messy, especially for a four by four matrix. So the real motivation for us to introduce this new method is for us to develop a way to calculate determinants for large matrices that's a bit more efficient than the cofactor expansion method. The goal of this method comes in a couple parts. So I'm going to explain it piece by piece. First, what we're going to do is use elementary row operations to simplify our given matrix to an upper triangular matrix. Secondly, we're going to create elementary matrices that correspond to each of the elementary row operations we did in step one. And our last step is to set up a matrix equation. And we're going to use that matrix equation to help us find the determinant of our original matrix A. So if U is the upper triangular matrix that we get, we're going to end up with an equation that looks like this. After k elementary row operations, each of these are represented by one of the elementary matrices. We get a times e1 times e2 all the way to ek is equal to our upper triangular matrix. We know how to find the determinant of all of these elementary matrices, as well as this upper triangular matrix. And we're going to use that information to help us find the determinant of our original matrix A. So here is how the magic happens. It all is all because of theorem number one. If E is the elementary matrix that we associate with an elementary row operation, and we're going to perform this elementary row operation on A, if A happens to be a square matrix, then this following equation is going to hold true. And this is how we're going to be able to use our procedure. It says that the determinant of the matrix we get from performing that elementary row operation, that matrix is EA, the determinant of that matrix is equal to the determinant of the elementary matrix times the determinant of our original matrix A. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a couple examples to help illustrate what theorem 1 is talking about. So first of all, I start out with a 2 by 2 matrix A. I've done one elementary row operation on it to get to this matrix here. So I've done row 2 minus 3 row 1s. And I'm going to represent this elementary row operation by an elementary matrix E. Now if we were to do the multiplication E times A, we will get this matrix here. And that's from theory from the last section. And what I want to do is because these are easy to calculate the determinants of these two by two matrices, let's go ahead and do that. What is the determinant of A? Determinant of A is four minus six for negative two. What is the determinant of E? Well, E is a lower triangular matrix, so we know that the determinant is the product of the numbers that are on the main diagonal. Determinant of E is equal to 1. And finally, we're going to calculate the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix EA. And the determinant of this matrix will be negative 2 minus 0. Alright, so what theorem 1 is saying is the determinant that we get from this matrix should be the same thing as the determinant of this one times the determinant of our original. And if we check, that's true. This number here is equal to the product of these two numbers here. So next I'm going to start with that same matrix A. And I'm going to perform a different elementary row operation on it. In this case, I'm going to divide row 2 by 3 to end up with this matrix EA. And this elementary row operation is going to correspond with this elementary matrix over here, where on the main diagonal we have 1 and 1 third. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the determinants of each of these three matrices and see what happens. So what is the determinant of EA? That's going to be 4 thirds subtract 2. Or 4 thirds minus 6 thirds. We get negative 2 over 3. And next.
next, let's quickly calculate determinant of E times determinant of A. So what is the determinant of E? Well, all we do is we multiply those numbers that are on the main diagonal, since E is a diagonal matrix. So the determinant of E is one third. And we already know what the determinant of A is from the last example. The determinant of A is equal to negative two. It's four minus six. And when we multiply these two out, we get negative two over three. And that's exactly what the determinant of EA is. Okay, we're going to jump right in and go for it. We're going to find the determinant of a five by five matrix using this elementary row operation procedure. Remember, our goal is to use elementary row operations on this five by five matrix to try to reduce it to upper triangular form first. Also, along the way, we're going to number our elementary row operations so that we can create elementary matrices later. So let's get going on using elementary row operations. You're probably going to have to pause the video a couple times during this section just to copy down these matrices. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to half row two. Notice that I'm skipping over column number one. Just because uh, we want to get upper triangular form does not mean we need to get row echelon form. So I don't need a leading one in that one one spot. I can leave the two there and everything will be okay. But what I do want to do is I would like to form a leading one in column number two so that I can cancel out that one that is underneath it. So notice that I labeled our first elementary row operation with a number one. Um, that's going to correspond to the first elementary matrix that we calculate later. Our second elementary row operation is we're going to take row 4, subtract row 2, and that's going to be our second elementary uh, matrix that we're going to form later. Doing that second elementary row operation is going to lead us to this matrix here. Now, that completes column 1 and column 2. Now we want to move on to column 3. The easiest way to get this matrix into upper triangular form is to switch row 3 and row 4. That's going to be our next elementary row operation. And there it is. Our last elementary row operation is row 3 switched with row 4. And that's going to simplify our original matrix to an upper triangular matrix. I'm going to label this upper triangular matrix for now with a capital U. So here's where theorem one comes into play. What we have is we started with a matrix A. We performed three elementary row operations on A to get to an upper triangular matrix U. If we were to take the determinant of both sides of this equation, we're gonna get that the determinant of U is equal to the determinant of our three elementary matrices multiplied together times the determinant of our starting matrix A. So to simplify, we're going to get determinant A is equal to the determinant of that upper triangular matrix divided by the determinants of all of our elementary matrices. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create those elementary matrices, find their determinants, and then find the determinant of U. Okay, before I start talking, pause the video and copy down these three elementary matrices. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the determinant of these three elementary matrices. E1 is a diagonal matrix. So we're just going to multiply all of the entries on the main diagonal, and we get that determinant of E1 is 1 half. For E2, E2 is a lower triangular matrix. So when we multiply all of the entries on the main diagonal, we get that the determinant of E2 is 1. E3 represents a type 3 elementary matrix. It was a switch of two rows, and we know that the determinant of these kinds of elementary matrices are equal to minus 1. Almost there. Our last step is to calculate the determinant of that upper triangular matrix U. Remember, it's upper triangular, so all we have to do is multiply those numbers that lie on the main diagonal. They were 2, 1, 2, 3, and 1. 
When we multiply all of those out, we get 12. By our formula, we know that the determinant of A is equal to 12 divided by those determinants of our elementary matrices, 1 half, 1, and negative 1. So when we take 12 and divide by a half, we get 24, and then when we divide by minus 1, we get negative 24 for our final answer. One nice thing about the elementary row operation procedure is that it gives us theorem number 2. And this is just uh, another quick way of noticing whether or not a determinant uh, of a matrix is equal to 0. So, theorem 2 says, if we start with a square matrix and we notice that that square matrix has two rows that are equal, the determinant of that matrix must be equal to 0. Also, if we notice that A has two rows that are multiples of each other, this is also an indication that the determinant of A is going to equal 0. If you do ever see a matrix that has two rows that are multiples of each other or are equal, do one elementary row operation. Create a full row of zeros. So I'm looking at this matrix A and I'm going, hey, row 3 looks a lot like row 2. If I take row 3 minus 2 row 2s, I'm going to get a full row of zeros. So here it is, I've done that elementary row operation and I've created a new matrix and I'm going to call this matrix B. It's not in upper triangular form, but because there's a full row of zeros, I don't need it to be in upper triangular form. So what we have is we started with A, we did one elementary row operation that I'm going to call E1, and we ended up with a matrix B. So by taking determinants of both sides of that previous equation, we get that the determinant of B is equal to the determinant of E1 times the determinant of A. Because B has a full row of zeros, we know its determinant is equal to zero. This step here is by cofactor expansion along row 3. Next, this determinant of this elementary matrix is not equal to zero. So I can divide both sides by determinant of E1. So these are going to cancel over on the right side, and I'm going to be left with 0 on the left-hand side. So this is an illustration of why Theorem 2 works. After doing some elementary row operations, we'll end up with a full row of zeros. We know that that determinant is equal to zero by cofactor expansion. We divide through by any elementary matrices, the determinants of those matrices that we may have calculated, and we're left over with our original matrix must have determinant equal to zero.